We're out here doing some diagnosis on the 2012 Jeep Wrangler JK with a big 3.6 liter in it. The other day my daughter was driving it, came home, the engine had was overheating and coolant was bubbling over, overflowing. Something's going on with the coolant system. So I'm doing some testing today. This is a super handy funnel fill kit. If you don't have one of these, this made this process so much easier. That'll be linked in the description below. So to diagnose it, what I did was hooked up my funnel kit and filled this up with some fluid. You gotta do it when the engine is cold though. You don't wanna be taking your radiator cap off when it's hot. Then I filled it up with some fluid about to here started the engine up and the goal is to warm it up as it's warming up I'm filling feeling the hoses right back here's our two heater core hoses these should get hot first before the thermostat opens and our engine is up to operating temperature the last hose that should get warm is this one right here, and that's after the engine's warmed up, the thermostat opens and allows coolant to flow through here. I was getting some good bubble, oh boy, it just sucked that down, I gotta fill that up. As our engine's cooling down here, it's gonna suck some of this fluid back in. I had to top that off real quick. So what I was saying is, as our thermostat opens, it allows fluid to flow through here. This hose stayed cold the entire time. The temperature on the inside, we're watching that, I had my wife hop in and get the engine up around 2,500 RPMs, let it warm up real good. I started to get the temperature gauge moving up to the high end, starting to overheat. It was not bubbling any gases out of this. That, that'll be a sign of a blown head gasket if you're getting exhaust gases bubbling out of here. I don't have the exhaust uh, test kit. There's a super handy kit though you can get for this. Uh, I will link that in the description below as well. And it's just a little kit you hook up onto this, add a little fluid, and test it if it changes colors then you have an exhaust leak hot exhaust is getting into your system and that'll cause you to overheat as well the reason I really think that this is my thermostat is because family just pulled up the reason I really think that it's my thermostat is because this hose never got hot once the thermostat opens and your fluid is flowing through here your fan kicks on but sure to listen to that as well just a few reasons why your engine will be overheating, so let's replace that thermostat. We're gonna start by opening up the petcock under here, drain a little bit of our fluid so that it doesn't spill out all over the place when we take the thermostat off. Where is our little petcock? Where are you? There you are. And while that drains, we can get access to our thermostat here. And one curious little thing on this thermostat, the old manual talks about putting RTV on the new gasket, on all surfaces of the gasket, before you put the thermostat housing back in place. Here we're just removing some stuff to get to the, the air box out of the way. I'll show you the new thermostat housing though. And from what I can see, I don't think you put RTV on it. I might be wrong. You guys can let me know, but we're gonna investigate this. And uh, if it looks like there's RTV on the existing one, but I'll show you the new one here in just a second. I'll show you the new one so you can see what I'm talking about where it has a nice little rubber seal on it. It does not look like it would be something you would put RTV on. So our fluid is draining nicely and our thermostat is right there. That's what we're going after. Our new thermostat is right over here and this is what I'm talking about. See that nice rubber gasket? and it did not come with any other type of gasket. Normally they have like a paper gasket or something. And yeah, you put RTV on both sides of it, stick it on there, put your new thermostat in place. But that, it's a nice little rubber piece all the way around. I, you, I wouldn't RTV that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig into this new one, see if it has RTV on it or if it has one of those rubber gaskets on it and that's it, let's see. made myself a nice little catch pan here. 
because I don't want to get fluid all over the place when I disconnect this hose. That's exactly what's going to happen. Let's see if I can catch a lot of that. And that looks like it's going to work great. Now it looks like there's just two 10 millimeter bolts here. And our thermostat. How's it? Yeah. There's no RTV on there. I was wrecked. Now in the meantime, I closed the petcock on the bottom of my radiator there, so I don't forget. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this done, but uh, the way the thermostat works, I, this one was sticking closed, I believe, because when I held that hose, it stayed warm or it stayed cold and never got hot. So that tells me that the thermostat was stuck closed; it wouldn't open. I'm gonna put some heat on this, get my new one out of the way, and it should open that up. I really don't think that this thermostat is gonna stay locked shut because I'm gonna put a lot of heat on it here. We'll see what it does besides melt the plastic. If you've never seen a thermostat work, this is actually pretty cool. Heats up, there's a, there's a little wax thing on the inside here and once it melts that, it lets it spring open. Wait, it's getting hot. Is it starting to move? Oh, yeah, I see I melted the plastic too much. Yeah, it's pushing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell if it moved on its own or if it just melted the plastic. But anyways, that's how they work. It heats up, opens up. Like, yeah, it is open now. Is that because that spring popped off? I don't know. It's broken now for sure. Now I want a nice clean surface for my new gasket, that rubber gasket to sit on. So we're gonna wipe it off real good here with some brake cleaner. And let's drop our new thermostat in place. And I've got a few tips on priming this, filling it up with our fluid and priming it. Get this lined up just like so. Get some bolts in there. It's hard to look around the camera, around you guys. And I can torque these two bolts to 108 inch pounds. Inch pounds. Not too super tight. All right, let's get the hose back on here. Don't want to over tighten that one either. Some people don't like those hose clamps or this style. I like them, they work good. Trouble is if you over tighten them, you can crack, you can crack your housings. These are made of plastic. So right here, right on the top of that thermostat housing, there's a little bleed screw. So if you don't know about that little bleed screw, it can make your life a lot easier. Right there, that little guy, you loosen, you fill it up with our coolant, and then we'll bleed that until the air will come out, and then when fluid starts coming out, you just tighten that down and you're good to go. Finish burping your system. So let's do just that. We'll start filling our system up with fluid. I am gonna reuse my old fluid because it was pretty clean, pretty new. I had done the radiator on this fairly recently, when I was having some other overheating issues, now I think that uh, thermostat's gone out because that top hose did not get hot when I was warming it up. Hopefully this does the trick now. And be sure to use the right kind of fluid on your Jeep. There's a difference between HOAT and OAT coolant. If you mix the two, you're gonna cause problems. They'll actually congeal together and make a mess. Right now I'm going to uh, loosen this little cap right here. Let's loosen this little bleeder valve until we start to get a little bit of fluid coming out there. Squeeze our hose. There we go. A little bit of air out there. Tighten that guy back up. We'll put our air intake back in and then start warming it up. Finish priming the system. Now just making sure I got everything tight. Hooked that uh, electrical connection on underneath. My vacuum hose is hooked back on. This is tight. I think we're good to go. We can start it up and finish priming it. 
All right, we're up and running. So I've got the heat on so that uh, coolant will pass through the heater core real well. Obviously we're watching for leaks. I'm gonna be feeling these hoses as I did earlier, waiting for these guys to get warm. Looking for leaks down at my thermostat. And this hose here, I want the heater core hoses to get warm before this one. And as it's warming up, I'll be topping off fluid if it sucks any of that down. Yeah, the heater core hoses are getting warm. And the top hose over here, this is still cool. Our temperature. Temperature is not quite warmed up yet. Well, I could tell the exact moment the thermostat on this opened up. This was cool, then I could feel it getting warm pretty quickly. The uh, reservoir over there started bubbling a little bit, letting out a few air bubbles, which is perfect. Doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And my temperature is staying right about where it's supposed to be. So the temperature inside is just perfect. Thermostat's right, the gauge is right where it's supposed to be. This top hose, nice and warm, thermostat's open. My reservoir here is burping just perfect. I think this resolved my issue. So happy with that. This funnel, if you don't have one of these, this is so handy in burping this system. Get yourself one of these along with that thermostat. I will link both of those in the description below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Check out my next video right up here. And have a good day. It's been a good 10 minutes or so and I'm still getting some bubbles. Be sure to purge your system really well. You want to get all those air bubbles out so you don't get any hot spots.